Welcome to the Witnessing Report. This is Hansel and Jim and Craig. This week, to start out, Jim went to the bar to witness on Thursday. How'd that go, Jim? Well, it was pretty interesting. I got a chance to talk to a homeless gentleman, actually, who was uh, walking by the bar, and we had a good conversation. He, he asked about, you know, proof of God's existence. And so I told him what we normally tell people. We ask them, you know, what kind of proof would it take? And then uh, they usually say something or maybe they say they don't know. But then we tell them, well, what if what if you had proof? And then God said everything in the Bible was true. Uh, you know, sin, salvation, hell, punishment, the whole thing. Uh, and people's reaction is usually quite negative toward God. And so it was the same kind of thing with this gentleman. But he kept referring to sheep, right? He didn't want to be a sheep to just blindly follow people. And so that's interesting because the Bible says Jesus is the good shepherd and uh, that his sheep hear his voice. Um, so that's exactly what the Bible calls us to be. But of course, the world, because of human pride, has a very negative connotation around that. And so unfortunately, with this man, he couldn't get past the idea that he would have to listen to somebody else. But that's the pride the Bible talks about, right? I mean, the Bible says that uh, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so as long as people want to be in control of their own life, which usually means doing the sins they want to do without anybody bothering them, uh, I'm, you know, I'm afraid they're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna see repentance and belief in Jesus. God isn't gonna grant them those things. The other, uh, interesting conversation was with a young man and a young lady. Both of them, uh, said they were Christians. The man seemed to be pretty drunk. Uh, the smell of alcohol was pretty strong and the woman was actually, uh, dressed in some pretty scanty clothing. They'd just come out of the bar. And it was interesting because, I, I I was trying to connect all these things and, you know, kind of went through the Ten Commandments with the young man because he told me the church he goes to uh, nearby and it's a, it's a, you know, one of the more modern churches and the things that go on in those types of things, kind of the uh, seeker friendly kind of thing. And so he, he quite readily volunteered uh, the fact that, you know, he's had sex outside of marriage. Uh, he seemed almost proud of the fact that he blasphemes God all the time. I mean, he even said that. And during most of the conversation, he was making fun of Jesus. So the same Jesus that presumably he's counting on to keep him out of hell. And so it was just so we talked about repentance what, what and regeneration, what true salvation, the evidence of, of it was. And I asked him, has, does your pastor, because I know the pastor of that church, and I asked him, does your pastor talk about repentance or hell or anything like that? He's like, no, no, he really doesn't talk about those things. Well, there you go. And so that's why you have people uh, that go to church. In fact, this, this young man said that he goes to church every Sunday. He loves going to church um, is, what he's, is exactly what he said. Well, of course, if he's not going to get any conviction, if the pastor is never going to tell him that anything's wrong, and he can quiet his conscience and go out drinking and sleeping around and blaspheming God and making fun of Jesus and not have any conviction, then well, sure, why wouldn't he love church? Until, of course, half a second after he dies, and then he's going to find out that he, he there wasn't a good uh, shepherd leading that flock uh, in that church uh, because he, he was never warned not to do these things. Presumably, he was never warned because he says he doesn't hear about these things in his church. So that was incredibly sad. Yeah, that's something to see. We often see, well, we always see when it's not Christianity, when it's not going by the Bible, it's people just trying to keep on sinning because, well, God hates sin. That's what separates us from God. Whether it be a workspace religions where you try to counteract your sin with good deeds and that's just so you can keep on sinning or whether it be a religion where you just die and go to heaven or get reincarnated and the punishment for sin isn't hell. We just see people want to keep on sinning and well, if we don't repent of our sins and put our faith in Jesus Christ, our good works aren't going about to anything. So this week on Friday and Saturday night, oh, we all went down to Seattle. Any comments to make on that, Craig? Yeah, I had some interesting conversations. Um, the first was with a gentleman uh, kind of later in the night. He came over and we gave him some socks and sandwich and he was looking at our stuff. And so I asked him, we usually do the something similar to what the Way of the Master program says that, you know, you go through the commandments 
see that they're guilty of si of uh, sinning and that God should judge them for their sin, which would make them go to hell, and then share with them the good news after you tell them the law. And so I did that with him, and uh, first he was saying that he believed in reincarnation, and all you have to do usually for people like that is just ask, well, what proof do you have? And just instantly he says, well, I have no idea. And uh, so then I told him what the Bible says, and uh, it was amazing because the Holy Spirit worked on him greatly, and he was at the end of telling him the law, and that, yes, because of the works he's done, he deserves hell. He was in tears, and he was just shaking his head and walking around. And then I told him what Jesus had done, and he was like, wow, that's awesome. And so he said he was going to read some of the books we gave him. He was going to go home and think about it more, and that he would uh, repent later. And it's just wonderful to see the, the power of God um, working in someone like that. Yeah, it is. You know, we know the Bible says in Galatians 3.24, the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. When we try to use these worldly things to get people into church or boost our numbers or look good, we have these people who don't repent of their sins. They're not regenerated. They don't hear about sin and they might even love going to church on Sunday. And they're not people who are repenting of their sins and trusting in Christ for the forgiveness of sins and so that they can sin no more, but just so they can go on their worldly carnal deeds. Anything you want to add to that, Jim, on Friday or Saturday night? Well, it was actually interesting. Um, God was very kind and he provided uh, Arabic New Testaments for us uh, to start giving out. And we gave out several on Friday night, including to a group of Middle Eastern men. And uh, the funny thing is we saw them again last night. And it turns out they were Muslim men. Uh, and we started talking and they actually asked some really good questions about Jesus. Uh, one of them said, well, you know, Islam, Christianity, very close uh, to each other. And I pointed out to him uh, the two very big differences. Number one, the God of Islam requires good works in order to earn your way to heaven. And you don't know if you've done enough of them until after you die. So, you know, you'd live a very nervous life wondering if you've done enough. And also uh, their understanding of Jesus, that he's a prophet. And so I got the chance to explain to him that, no, he's God incarnate, God in the flesh. And he had to be. That's the only way he could live a perfect life. And his sacrifice for us could be perfect and appease the perfect justice of a perfect God. And so all of this, it was very cordial and they were asking really good questions and they were very interested. And we spoke for probably half an hour or so. And there were, uh, I think, five of them all together. And when we were done, you know, we shook hands and, and they said, well, you know, we'll, we'll see you again out here. And so it's just, it's terrific. There's just, God's giving people so many chances and he provides so many ways for us to share the word with people and to just see uh, his Holy Spirit working on people is just, it's such a blessing and what a glorious thing it is. Yeah, God's given us things the enemy doesn't have. We have truth, we have his word, and we have the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us and it works on people. You can see the conviction. But again, going by worldly and carnal means doesn't mean the Holy Spirit's necessarily going to work on people through that. You have to obey God. <laughs> He's laid it out for us. It's not a new thing. People have been doing it for 2,000 years. Jesus laid it out for us. Anything to add to that, guys? Yeah, actually, there, there's one more thing. Uh, there's this gentleman I spoke with last night, and I've, I've spoken with him before. And like so many people these days, um, he kind of had this conglomeration of different spiritual beliefs uh, and just kind of melded them into everything. And he had a book on Buddhism and he had a thing on, I think it was Taoism. And he, but he said he believed, you know, parts of the Bible too. And it was funny because he was really on this. And, and I kept talking to him about just the truth of God's word and, and all these other things because he didn't want to hear about punishment. And uh, we, we talked about that, the consequences for sin. And he even at one point, you know, said, because I said, you know, what happens if you're just telling yourself all these other gods exist because you're more comfortable with them and they don't bother your conscience? And he's like, yeah, I know. And so he, he, he admitted, uh, pretty early on that, you know, he didn't like it when his, when his conscience was convicted, but he kept going on about this and praise God. He, he, God allowed the conversation to keep going and uh, we were able to give him a couple of sandwiches because uh, he's having a hard time. He's out on the street also. And um, after a while, it was funny because we talked about just giving up, just stop fighting God. He's, he's telling himself all this stuff. And, you know, what happens if the Bible's true and he, and he dies and then he finds out that all he was doing was just lying to himself. 
uh, so that he could just continue in his sins. And at the end, he finally just, he just hung his head. He just hung his head and he said, yeah, I know, I know, I know this is right. And so it's, it's just that power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin and all these lies that people tell themselves to convince themselves that they're not going to get punished for their sins, that they can keep on living this way. I know about this firsthand because I spent almost 40 years telling myself the very same lies. So when I hear other people say these things, I know exactly where they're coming from. Uh, and we finally, we talked about just giving up and just letting God grant you repentance and give you faith and just be willing to let go of these sins. Um, and so hopefully, I, you know, we walked away at the end, it, it was good. And, and, and he left acknowledging, uh, what he was doing. And so hopefully God will continue to give him clarity on this and, um, and hopefully grant him repentance and faith. But it just shows you the power of God's word, even if people don't like it, even if you keep hammering it into them, it's not our words and our wisdom. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can see the effect and it's just dramatic. Yeah, that's absolutely true. We can lead people to the cross, we can show them their sin, but it's only through a supernatural work of God that they may be saved. Okay, so you can email us at twr at jesusforsinners.com. Again, that's twr at jesusforsinners.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.